Hi there, this is Fabian speaking and I got a new script. It's called Monoline Text and as the name says, you can create single stroke fonts with it. It's based on a character set Dr. A.V. Hershey created around 1967. This set was often used as font for graphical user interfaces in programming and in 2010 John Ware created from one of these character sets the monoline text script for Illustrator and he allowed me to port this to After Effects. So I did it and um, now I got the script for you. I'm going to show you how this works and um, to make this work properly you really should download this script reposition anchor point from Charles. It helps a lot uh, if we are working with, with shapes to get the, get the anchor points and into the right spot. So let's dive right in. This is a user interface and I'm gonna uh, guide you through all the things you can do with it and all, what all these buttons mean. I hope it's pretty obvious with these icons. They are built on glyphicons. Pretty nice icon set. When you start the script, you will see this character set in here. These are the characters that exist in the simplex font. And of course, you can create your own, hack open the script and uh, or add more characters to it. In upcoming versions, I will try to extend this and port some more of the, of the fonts Dr. Hershey created. But right now, it's only these characters. But that's already uh, a lot to fiddle with. So, just to show you how this works, let's add some text in here. And uh, define a point size and hit write. There you go. We got our text done. Now you can, if you just got one layer, reposition it, reposition the anchor, and you can uh, access all that shape layer goodness you can do with After Effects. You also can create masks. There you go. And uh, the third option is to create a motion path. So let me delete this. There he creates a motion path. As you can see, he will also create a mask layer with it. Because if you got your motion path and you want to reposition it, it's better to have it uh, parented to another layer. So we can just scale up the path how we want it to be and then delete the layer and there's our motion path in the right, in the right size. The motion path will always be created within the, the range of the work area. So if you set your work area pretty tight, he will create the keyframes like this. Make sure you have enough space in your work area to create lots of keyframes. This is the, the basic usage. Let me walk you through all the options we got. So, as I told you, you can decide to use shape layers. You always get a little help tip that explains what this button is for. This is for shape layers, this is for masks, and this activates the motion path. Then you can make the text left aligned, center aligned or right aligned. And with these three buttons, you can decide if you want to have it all on one layer, split it per line or split every character. So if we split every character like this, we get a nice comp with lots of characters. The spaces also get created, as you can see, Let's, let us just delete them. And here we go. We have to add a stroke. It's only added to the first one. The other ones don't have a stroke. So you can decide how your stroke has to look. Edit it, make it bigger, add some other uh, features from the, from the shape layers. And then, then just copy paste it onto the other layers so you can create your text styling how you like it. And um, this is also why I told you to uh, get the reposition anchor point script. Right now, the anchor point is in the center of the comp, 
but the script does a pretty good job in repositioning the anchors. And here we go, we got our anchors always at the center of the, of the glyph and we can now add our animations and stuff like that. Separating by character or by line, of course, works also on uh, masks. So you get a mask for every row or you can get a mask for every, every character. If you already have a layer and you select the layer and uh, put it on, on single layer mode, he will add the masks to the, to the selected layer. If you have a shape layer, um, let me make one. And now you want some different text on it. He will add it to the text layer. This only works on single layer mode because if you have several layers, uh, it makes no sense. That's it for these buttons. Here, pretty easy, you can define the point size. You still can scale it up afterwards, but it's nice to have uh, something to start, to start with. And uh, this ABC button, you can see it in the, also in the overlay. Uh, he adds back again the basic character set, so you can see if the characters you want are existent or not. If the character doesn't exist, he just skips it. Then we got some settings. We can tell him to use uh, roving keys and we can define the color of the, of the solids to create it. This is in a range from 1 to 0, so 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0.5 is gray. Let me show you. We get a gray layer. Here we got some more info what all these buttons do, but I think the uh, icons and the uh, overlays will do just fine. Not a lot more to say. If you have questions, ask me. Um, if you saw the demo, you see what you can do with this. I think using masks is useful for, for playing with strokes. or 3D stroke from Trapcode. Plexus also works fine with it. But the thing I think it's more interesting is using the shape layers because you can do pretty amazing stuff with the, with the shape layer options uh, and get really nice, clean, slick looking fonts. So have fun with it. If you enjoy it, let me know. I would love to see some results. And if you run into any bugs or questions, just ask me. Thank you for watching and go make something.